filmmaker M. Night Shyamalan said, at my core, I'm a minimalist. When you put limitations on what you're working on, that's when you find your voice and your beauty. I'm always telling crew members or filmmakers, think of what we do as sushi making, the least amount of ingredients at the highest quality level. More, more information, more data, more content, more channels, more choices. In a world of more, it's important to master less. The path to less is not yes. To reduce more to less, we need the discipline to focus. To focus is to intentionally channel your attention, effort, and resources toward a singular point. That point may be a person, project, activity, or goal, but it stands alone in your mind. At least for now, the moment your eyes, ears, and hands or thoughts wander to something else, it's gone. Focus is a foundation of both organizational and individual success. When you think of successful companies, they typically begin by focusing in one area to become great. Google in search, Nvidia in graphics processing units, Amazon in online retailing, Nordstrom in service, etc. As Kevin Plank, self-made billionaire and founder of sports equipment maker Under Armour said, focus is one of the most important things to have in your business. For the first five years, as we grew our company from zero to five million, we made really one shirt. Another way to say it, that a company needs to become famous for something to find that niche. The challenge is that in a world of more, it's easier to not focus. A survey of 350,000 people worldwide conducted by Franklin Covey found that 40% of people spend their time on things that are completely irrelevant to their goals and work. This equates to wasting two out of five days of the work week. So in a 50 week working year, erasing any and all productivity in 100 of 250 days. Ouch. During the past 20 years of facilitating strategic thinking workshops for leadership teams and providing strategic counsel and executive coaching, I've identified three causes that lead to a failure to focus along with tools and techniques to overcome them. Number one, unclear on the core. If focusing means we're directing attention toward a single point, we'd better make sure that it's the right point. The right point is an activity, area, offering, or initiative that will help you progress toward a predetermined goal. Are you and your team spending time on products or services that don't offer customers superior value relative to the competition? If so, why? What are the core competencies or areas of expertise and capabilities, skill sets, that are most responsible for your success? Would everyone in your business agree on the same three to five? How much time is your team spending on these competencies and capabilities versus other less valuable aspects of the business? Number two, multitasking. The crack cocaine of the business world is multitasking. Both flood the brain with dopamine, provide a brief high, and kill your productivity. The primary pipe for multitasking is your smartphone. Studies show people check their smartphones on average every six and a half minutes or roughly 150 times a day. This constant shuffling back and forth between tasks has become the norm and assumed by many to be a hallmark of highly productive people. It's not. Professor Clifford Nasa's studies from Stanford University suggest that managers who continually shift between multiple tasks do not manage those tasks as well as those who focus on one thing at a time. His data show when people switch between tasks, they take up to 30% longer to complete them and make twice as many errors as those who don't switch. While multitasking may make you feel more productive, it's actually hurting your overall performance much more than you imagine. Professor Nas concluded, high multitaskers are suckers for irrelevancy. Multitaskers were just lousy at everything. Number three, inability to make trade-offs. A trade-off is defined as the exchange of one thing for another of more or less equal value. In order to make trade-offs, we need to make decisions. The Latin term for decision is decadere, which means to cut off. If you have trees on your property, you know that every few years you should cut off or prune the lower or dead branches in order to promote new growth in the tree. However, in business, we have a harder time pruning, cutting things off from our attention, time, and other resources. 
A survey of 463 managers by McKinsey and Company asked if their senior leadership team cut off unsuccessful initiatives quickly enough, and 52% responded no. When you agree to pursue a new opportunity that's not related to your goals, or serve on a committee with little connection to your priorities, you've also agreed to not invest your time and talent in other potentially more valuable areas. By not making a trade-off, you've actually decided, even if you didn't consciously state the decision. In economics, it's referred to as the opportunity cost, the loss of potential gain from other alternatives when one alternative is chosen. Before agreeing to put your time, talent, or budget to something, consider the opportunity costs involved and then determine if it still makes sense. Focus saves us from the swamp of meaningless activity. Focus separates us from mediocrity inducing multitasking. Focus demands our full attention and deserts us without discipline. Focus is our friend if we intentionally invite it into our day. Focus slaps more in the face, throws its arms around less, and responds to no. Focus until it's gone.